I watched and analyzed over 20 separate reviews, and here is my ultimate conclusion. Welcome back, this is Board Game Officer, that is right, I have watched way too many of these videos, but I did this for you guys, so if you like this style, go ahead and subscribe and like this video down below, so I can do more of these. Also, my Patreon is in the link below, and if you want to become a YouTube member, I'd be very grateful for you to support the channel, so I could do more of the, these review of reviews, because these are very time consuming, but I love to do them. I think they're great. So let me know what you think of this. Let's go ahead and dive in. Today, we're going to do Deep Rock Galactic. The two new expansions coming out. They are in Kickstarter right now. There's probably two days left by the time this is posted. First thing that I want to do is I'm going to go through the really quick through the Kickstarter to see what there is. And then I'll go through the good, the bad, the nor good, nor bad, the rankings people gave it, who's backing it, and then I'll give my ultimate conclusion at the end of what I think after watching all these videos. So let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, so we have just over 2 million actually just pledged. This just moved up just a little bit ago. As I've been prepping for this video, it's gone kind of over 2 million now. We have 8,500 backers. Right now, there's only three days to go. So this is just two new expansions, Space Rig and the Biomes. We'll go through, you can get the base game on this. So if you're new to this game, this you can jump into this kickstart as well. It is rated an 8.4 on BGG, which is not too bad. If you did not back within the first 24 hours, sorry, you missed out on this coin. You know, it's probably worth like 50 cents. <laughs> so we have the Space Rig expansion, which is gonna get in these rigs, some pipes that you're going through, which I guess is actually part of the video game another little aspect part of the video game that they're adding to this you're getting special assignments escort missions processing missions getting new challenges and upgrades and then the biome expansion you're getting some new missions and gameplay there you're getting new biomes so you're actually gonna get some magma magma core going on here some fungus and glacial and azure weld stuff so you're really getting into some cool different biomes here rather than just being in a space mine uh, eliminate missions just killing you're gonna get a lot of new creatures these minis look pretty cool and some hazards of course so now let's get into these pledges here we've got just a space rig for 85 dollars usd the biome for 85 dollars and 150 if you want both. <laughs> Pretty steep for just expansions. However, if you want the expansion bundle for $200, it'll get you those two, along with a mini expansion, another mini expansion. The collectors is gonna give you all that, plus this five inch. <laughs> okay, that is awesome actually. So I just, I'll get into this later, but Bowers Gaming Corner, he always harps on people that when they don't put inches, so in his video, he actually talks about how, why didn't they just put five inches on here, blah, blah, blah. So that's actually awesome that they actually put five inches on there. 100% specifically because Bauer's Gaming Corner. So if you're watching this, Bauer, good work. <laughs> well, once again, the mini expansions, but you get some beer coasters. Because, I mean, who doesn't want beer coasters with a $200 game? <laughs> a dice tray. Some SCL files, which... Uh, yeah, Bowers Gaming Corner actually looked this up. There's only like 6% of people actually have a 3D printer. So adding these in is kind of, it's kind of hit or miss. That's another, maybe that's another video even talking about SCL files and Kickstarters. Cause that's, yeah, well, we'll see. And then more plastic tokens. There is a newcomer pledge that you can, ba you can back just the base game here for 133, which is actually pretty close to the first one, meaning the first Kickstarter. And then you got the newcomer plus the expansions for 250. You've got the new click newcomers collector choice for 350 which basically the exact same thing you just also get the base game there you go there's a picture of that five inch <laughs> tall miniature there which is pretty cool and here's your space rig content these boards are look pretty nice these double layered boards are super nice to have this is kind of weird so now they're going through what's actually in these boxes after you've already looked at all the pledges now you're looking at what's actually in those which i feel like is a little backwards but that's all right by all here's the content in the biome here's some images of the expansions so like see there's that piping that you're going through as well and then you've got like, just a couple of only like three videos here which I usually like to have more. Don't worry, I found more than three videos to watch. <laughs> you got some mission control. These are just like little add-ons here. The Not the add-ons, but the stretch goals. There you go. These are just all the stretch goals that we're seeing within here. Just adding more cards, a little bit different of the map set up there. Oh, here we go. Here's the other. These must be like daily unlocks, maybe. And then these are the stretch goals here. As you can see, just more cards, more upgrade miniatures there. The board, double-layered board there. A whole lot of other miniatures. A little core plastic pearl, which I... If you ever wanted a plastic pearl, here you go. <laughs> um, let's see here. Once again, going through the miniatures, more miniature add-ons. Here's more add-ons. So you can add on just the 
coasters if you want, the dice tray, the mini expansions, SCL files for 20 bucks, that's not too bad, expansion tokens, plastic, sleeve cards, base game, ooh, the neoprene game mat, that would actually be pretty nice. I don't think I saw anyone have that, I think that must be a new thing for this one, because none of the videos that I watched from the first Kickstarter had a neoprene mat, so that's pretty cool, I think that would be pretty nice. Some extra dice, of course, because extra dice is always nice. And now the shipping. So they actually did pretty well, I think, with like putting all of these out for each expansion or for each pledge level they put out how much it would be. So you're looking at from anywhere USD 20 to $75. So <laughs> depending on your pledge level, which right when you're playing paying $300, that's like another $100 for shipping. Just have to factor that into the price of the game. Timeline, it is supposed to come out by October 2024, which I feel like that actually might work. When you've got this big of a game, I feel like adding just two expansions, hopefully that will be pretty quick. And I feel like knock on wood, then that date might be pretty doable. All right, so there you have the Deep Rock Galactic. Let's go ahead and get into everything here. All right, so let's go on to the good here. So I've actually started to separate these out into like little sections here. So this first section is about the enemies, the good about the enemies. So the enemies, there seem to be a very good amount of variety with all the enemies just in the base game. So let alone these expansions, I think the variety is excellent with the enemies and what's out there. And also one other cool thing that a lot of people talked about was how simple the AI system was for this game, right? Meaning playing solo, playing, you're not going to be spending a whole lot of time activating the enemies. They're pretty simple and there's a lot of variety, so it makes it kind of fun that way. Now I'm going to go over the, what people talked about over the mechanics. They really like, so you have three actions and there's five to nine actions that you could choose from out of those three actions. And that really makes some really neat tactical choices throughout the mission. And then combat, they talked about combat being very simple, but yet engaging at the same time. Quick roll and dice, see what happened and then move on. Now this other mechanic is kind of like the movement. I think this is probably one of the un most unique things about this game is the board manipulation here where you can, where you set it up here and then you can actually explore more and more and more, but they're just little explore, explore spaces, right? So if you want to, like if you have a bad guy here, you can actually explore to go out and around, come up behind that bad guy, right? So it's cool because the explore spaces are so much smaller, right? Usually there's big tiles that you're moving around, exploring the whole dungeon where this is like, you're exploring just a little bit, which is rough because that's a little slow going, but it means you could really make your own path throughout it which is really neat and very unique i think and then another thing they talked about was that it's a very quick play it's super quick it's not gonna take you you know two three four hours it's like an hour hour and a half most playthroughs that i watched and so that's not too bad really all right now i think the next thing that was one of the biggest positives were the heroes and this actually surprised me it was how awesome the different classes felt which really surprised me because there's only four classes. Even these expansions don't bring in any extra classes, which for me, I, I love different heroes and all the different abilities. So that was like, oh, there's only four to choose from. But honestly, that was probably one of the biggest positives that I saw was how great each class is. So even though there's only four of them, everyone raved about how important each one felt, how each one felt different because of their abilities and the weapons and what they could hold and what they could do. And one guy even said, he's like, I read the what, what they did and I'm like, well, that's not not really cool like just reading it but then when playing he's like oh like that made a huge difference he felt powerful doing it he felt like he was the, ne the one that needed to do that because of his ability right so it really makes you feel individualized with those classes another thing that's nice is these double layered boards obviously this is the space rig but all the hero boards are also double layered like that and everyone talked about how nice that is to keep everything organized and everything which is really awesome that everything is double layered in this game which helps a lot the next thing is about the components everyone really talked about how good the components was the cardboard was nice and thick the minis didn't like overflow the space right they stayed within their little hexagon and the quality of the minis actually were pretty good as well the next is the solo ability that because of the simpleness and the combat and stuff be able to play solo is not bad there is a true solo where you have a true solo plus like a little side guy that you have as a helper but you can multi-hand it as a solo player and it's not too bad because everything is pretty simple so that's really nice to have up because solo is such a big thing nowadays the next is talking about whether or not this game is good compared to the video game one person stated that you're gonna love this game whether you love the whether you have played the video game or whether you haven't played the video game right so either way it's not like you have to have played the video game to really enjoy that and it actually does very well 
incorporating the video game aspects, which is actually very impressive because getting that feel and that look of the video game is very hard. I mean, you could just look at the last, what, there's been like, I don't know, seven or eight big video game board games come out and none of them have done this good. This is probably one of the best video game adaptations into a board game that there has been, which is impressive, I think. All right, so now onto the not good nor bad. Basically, this is where, depending on who you are, it's a good thing or a bad thing. So one thing that a lot of people talk about was this is very much zombicide feeling where you're just chucking dice, trying to kill all these little bad guys, right? And they just keep swarming you, which, you know, if you love zombicide, that's great. But if you just don't like the zombie theme, but you love the space dwarf mining theme, this would be a game for you because it has that zombicide feeling. Now, someone else attributed to Cthulhu Death May Die, which is also very similar to zombicide. But so if you like that, you might like this. If you don't like those, then maybe you won't like this. Also, this is pretty interesting. You can play this as a campaign, but it's almost like a, what they call like a deep dive campaign, meaning it's how deep can you go? How many can you go until you die? Meaning health and ammo and all that stuff does not refresh as you go through from level to level. Once again, can be a good thing if you like campaigns, then that's awesome that this has that campaign aspect. If you don't care, then you don't care. All right, now on to the bad. So we're going to talk about the bad about the enemies now, is that because there's a lot of variety, which is awesome, but it also has the bad part, meaning you have to look up the reference quite often, which can just be kind of annoying. A lot of, along with that enemy reference, yeah, so if you look here, I mean, that's his, that's his finger right there. This is the reference board for the enemies. And this is just the base game. Like, it's huge. <laughs> it takes up so much table space just for the reference for the enemies, which is nice because they're easy to see. It's right there. But I feel like it's, I feel like it could have been a book. It could have been a little card. It, they could have done something different. Also, the weapons, because there's like resistances and weaknesses and strengths and stuff, that there's a lot of referencing the enemies of when you're attacking. You're like, wait, now what do I need? So there's a lot of referencing back and forth that you're needed for that. Someone did talk about how it's kind of cool because it's different in the sense of it's not hero enemy hero enemy hero enemy you kind of go and the enemy kind of activate when the action cards tell them to kind of randomly but with that that means the enemies might activate two or three times without you activating which can be just really frustrating that they come attack you three times there's nothing you could do and you get wiped out so right there's kind of that balance a little bit of issues just only one talk person talked about that so i don't know how prevalent that is but that was something that was said and with that it is rolling dice meaning sometimes you'll roll the dice and you might not do anything on your turn which also can be frustrating now this was a really sad one there was a lot of variety in enemy but the variety in scenarios wasn't that great which i think that's this expansion is awesome so if you've played this game and you just wish there was more scenarios and different type of missions these expansions 100 are for you um so talking about like the map layout they did kind of talk about how sometimes the the setup itself can be a little tedious because there's all those different shapes within the map tiles, like all these like different shapes in here and they're not numbered. So you have to look like, wait, is that the shape? Okay, yep, yep, that's the right shape. And then go, right? So the setup can be a little tedious in that way. The rule book, uh, I kind of got both. One person said that the rule book was not a bad read. Another one said that there's a lot of plot holes within it, meaning you have to kind of figure out what's going on. But one thing that everyone did say was that there needs to be, there's no player aid reference here or anything. And that is needed because the rulebook is not good for referencing. I mean, if you need to find something specific, good luck, <laughs> right? It's not, there's not a good index or at the end or anything about where stuff is. So that's something, I mean, I'm sure if you look on BG, somebody's made the player aid, but it does not come with it. Uh, the two big things from Room Board's Five Reasons Not to Back, whereas, you know, this is a board game. If you love the video game, if you'd rather just go play the video game, do you really need this? All right, so it's kind of, his things are not like, the five reasons not to back usually aren't like, oh, don't back it because this mechanic is stupid, <laughs> right? That's not really his like five reasons not to back. He's trying to be like, hey, let's be real here. If you want to go play the video video game, just go play the video game. If this box is just going to sit on the shelf because you'd rather play the video game, then you don't need this. The expansions aren't going to help. And the next one is this should actively excite you, which I'll kind of talk about later on too, but there's not a whole lot new and exciting in this. Like it doesn't bring any super new dungeon crawler mechanic other than I think the, as I talked about, you know, you could mine through, open up little passages and manipulate the board, which is really cool. But I feel like that's really the only big thing that it's adding. Meaning you should love the theme, you should love dungeon crawlers, and then this is for you. Just making sure you're doing a good buy. Now the biggest con, a negative thing is the price. Uh, I mean, 85 bucks for an expansion when the base game is 130, you know, so I, I, I don't know. It, it made it really hard because they actually did a standee version in the first pledge, which was only like 65 or 80 bucks. 
where there's no standees here that's all miniatures so you don't have that option so you have to buy the 85 dollar one if you spent that on the base it's kind of hard to do that on the expansion right so the price is not the best and then the second biggest thing is do you need these expansions <laughs> right if you've played this game and you like just the base game you don't need these like this is not something that like oh you have to have this to fix the game right this is just going to give you more of what you already have so if you love the base game and you're good with it you do not need these expansions all right now on to who is backing now sadly once again i didn't get a whole lot of this optimal play he did say this was actually his review of the base game but he did say he's like if they come out with expansions i want those <laughs> so i'm gonna guess he's probably a backer here um room and board talked about he's probably gonna look at it down the road whether at the pledge manager or at retail but it's not really pulling out to him same thing Alex from Board Game Co. He's like, I don't know what this is adding for dungeon crawler aspect, but he's still backing it. <laughs> Actually, that was the base game that he backed. Um, he did not stay with you. He's backing these expansions. Um, I only got one rating from the Dice Tower. And these are actually three people from the Dice Tower. I don't follow the Dice Tower a lot. But these are three Dice Tower people that I actually don't know, but I'll show them here. But they all rated an 8 out of 10, which is not too bad. Um, Bowers Gaming Corner, he gave a C+. That was mainly to this kickstarter though because it doesn't really explain too much about the gameplay it doesn't give you a whole lot of information here which you could see newcomers the newcomer pledge there's only 137 out of 8500 backers the base newcomer is only 137 and the newcomer collectors is 185 so this is you know maybe a thousand almost a thousand people with newcomers within this 8500 backer because this is not advertising to new people this is advertising to those people who already have it because i feel like the base game kind of lacked and needed these expansions if you want Wanted to play for a longer time and so i feel like that's really why it's doing really well to those return backers all right so now my ultimate conclusion of should you back this kickstarter right now so right off the top kind of what i've already noted too if you already love this game and you just want more this is what you want game wise i think it's going to add more and better stuff to it so if you already love it and you want more 100 this is an easy back as i just talked about you know 7500 of these people are returning backers which kind of tells you that the base game is pretty good <laughs> <laughs> right if it's coming back and doing another two million dollars just for the expansion that probably means it's pretty darn liked out there someone actually did mention that this is that's not a surprise that they're doing a reprint you know they're doing an expansion but also doing a reprint of the first one because it was so light it does do a really good adaptation of the video game which is really saying something that i talked about before so that is really awesome actually i think that's going to appeal to a lot of people and then alex from board game go he did talk about how this is a pretty safe back so i actually watched his one from a year ago of the base game and he was actually like flippity floppity on he's like i can't tell you it's a safe bet because it might be and it might not be he didn't really know but with this one because now he looked to see what happened he's like yeah it's it's a pretty darn safe buy you might not get more money for it but if you get it you play it you don't like it there's a high chance that you'll get be able to get your money back of what you paid for it so in that case if this looks somewhat appealing to you i think it's a safe back if you're willing to put that money on the line just for a little bit because there's a good chance of getting your money back if you sell it on second hand market so i do think that this would be a safe back overall does this do something new eh, i don't know i don't think it does too much it doesn't really stand out to me with like mechanics and stuff it seems it's one of those things like yeah i think i would really enjoy playing it i really do but would it stack up with all my other stack back there i think that's really what it comes down to is are you going to play this versus all your other dungeon crawlers that you have and that is going to give you the answer of whether or not you should back it or not anyways there you have an another review of reviews once again if you like this format if you like this place to come and see what's going on what everyone is saying please go ahead and like and subscribe and let me know what video you want me to do next if you're wanting to help me out and help this channel out to do more of these review of reviews i'll do any review of review no questions asked for any member of patreon or youtube member so if there's something you like please let me know and i will see you later